So far, we have considered examples of transformations of geometric vectors and also of functions including polynomials. So of course now it's time to consider transformations of vectors in Rn. So we'll be dealing with an entirely different vector space, but of course our discussion will very much parallel our previous discussions. And the questions we'll ask will be identical to the questions we asked previously. For example, we'll want to know whether the linear trans whether the transformation we're dealing with is linear. And if it is linear, we'll want to discover the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. And the discussion starts the same way, by specifying the transformation. Now, because we're now dealing with vectors in Rn, which are sets of n numbers, in particular R3, triplets of numbers, to specify a transformation, I need to indicate what happens to each individual entry of the vector. This is an entry wise sort of transformation. And you should also notice how the description of the transformation is always very natural with respect to the type of linear space we're dealing with. When we were discussing geometric vectors, our transformations included words like rotation, translation, reflection, projection, all sorts of things that you can do with geometric vectors. When our attention shifted to functions, we started talking about derivatives, dilation, and other sorts of things that you can do with functions. Now we're dealing with sets of n numbers. What can you do with sets of, of n numbers? Manipulate the entries. All you have is the entries, so all you can do is manipulate them. So the rule that defines the transformation needs to specify what to do with each entry. And the rule that we'll consider right now that you see on the board certainly does that. It has to be specific enough that you know exactly how to transform any vector. For any input, you should be able to determine the corresponding output. And in this case, it's certainly not hard, but considering a couple examples is always very helpful. And it's also very helpful to describe the equation in words. And what this transformation does is switch the first two entries and multiply the last entry by two. So one, two, three will go into two, one, six. And similarly, seven, seven, nine, that's an interesting one. It has the switching, switching the first two entries does nothing. So we end up with seven, seven, 18. Is this transformation linear? Now that we understand the transformation, that of course is the obvious next question. Is it linear? And I think it's one of those cases where it's so simple to see that it's linear, it might actually be confusing. So I won't really try to prove it with equations. I'll just sort of talk you through it. So we're invited, let's just talk about the first two entries and then we'll add the last one. Switch the first two entries. Let's test against scalar multiplication. If we were to multiply this vector by two first and then transform it, or transform it first and then multiply by two. Would it matter? Would we not get the same thing? Multiply whatever the numbers are by two and then switch them, or switch them first and then multiply by two. Or similarly, multiply, too bad I chose two. Let's say, let's use three as the scalar. So does it matter whether we multiply these two numbers by three and then switch them or switch them first and then multiply by three? Of course it doesn't. And for the last entry, does it matter if we multiply this entry by three first and then times two it or times two it first and then multiply it by three? Of course it doesn't matter. And the same thing with adding two vectors. Does it really matter if we add two vectors first and then switch the first two entries, or whether we switch the individual entries and then add them together. Of course it doesn't matter. This transformation is linear. And now that we have a linear transformation, we want to know its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And once again, we so far don't have a robust way of determining eigenvalues and eigenvectors. It'll come soon enough. But for now, it may be even more beneficial to do it by insight. All right, let me just show you the order in which I would have guessed them. So I think this multiplication by two is helpful because that's almost the sort of scaling that we look for in eigenvectors. But if we just scale some vector, this vector is certainly not twice this vector because while 18 is twice nine, 
these two sevens are not twice these two sevens. So that doesn't quite work. But if the sevens were zeros, then it would certainly work. So the first good guess for an eigenvector is zero, zero. We could say zero, zero, nine. But remember that in the, out of the entire eigenspace, you just have to choose one vector. And perhaps the first, the best one to choose is zero, zero, one. Under this transformation, zero, zero, one becomes zero, zero, two. And is the result parallel or does it point along the same line? That's geometric analogy. Algebraically, is it a multiple of the original vector? Is zero, zero, two a multiple of zero, zero, one? The answer is yes, it is. And that multiple is two. So this is our first eigenvector and two is our first corresponding eigenvalue. So, so far we have one. Can we find another? And I think that this one still provides a hint because if we just look at the top part, it looks like it remained itself, suggesting that there is an eigenvalue of one. But of course, this nine messed it up. But if we made it zero, then seven, seven, zero would end up being seven, seven, zero. The output is a multiple of the input and the corresponding eigenvalue is one. So again, we could write down zero, excuse me, seven, seven, zero. But since we only need to choose one vector that has the same sort of behavior, we'll just choose one, one, zero. One, one, zero under this transformation becomes one, one, zero. So there you go. It's an eigenvector and the corresponding eigenvalue is one. So now we have found two eigenvectors and two corresponding eigenvalues. There is one more. Can you see it? I think this one is uh, the most enjoyable to discover out of all three. There are only three. We'll later discuss just how many eigenvectors and eigenvalues can there be. And the answer will be no more than the dimension of the space. And then later on when we do complex numbers, the answer will be exactly the dimension of the space. But that's in the future. For now, I'm just letting you know that there is one more. And the question is, can you find it? And maybe you should pause the video and look for it on your own. Uh, if you find it on your own, you'll really enjoy it. But now I'll reveal it. And that eigenvector is one minus one, zero. That's because under this transformation, one minus one, zero becomes minus one, one, zero. And is minus one, one, zero a strict multiple of this vector? And the answer is yes, it is. And that multiple is minus one. So the third eigenvalue is minus one. And we have now discovered all three. So I hope you enjoyed this discussion. And the main takeaway was that entirely different vector spaces are treated the same way from the point of view of linear transformations, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and so forth. And it's really just uh, an example of what linear algebra is all about, treating all sorts of different objects, as long as you can all consider all of them vectors. That's going all the way back to what, one of our first lectures. So as long as you're dealing with vectors, whether they're geometric, func geometric vectors, or functions, or sets of n numbers, you can have the same sort of discussion with respect to all of those spaces. And there is something interesting that linear algebra will point out to you with respect to all of those spaces. And this was just one of those examples. So now we'll consider a few more and then try to draw some generalizations.